finally know the reason why Harry and Meghan lose their morals so easily. We need to avoid this. Hello, friends. Welcome to Breaking Royal News about the notorious hypocritical couple Harry and Meghan Markle on our Kate Middleton and the Queen News version 2 channel. When spite and hatred reach this depth, it's visceral, uncontrollable by logic or reason. Let us learn from Harry and Meghan never to let anger, resentment, and jealousy dig a hole so deep in our minds that we lose who we are. I don't think it is right to blame any victim for the behavior of their abuser, regardless of who the abuser is or who the victim is. This applies to Harry's victims just as much as it would apply to the victims of any fraudster, extortionist, con artist, defamer, domestic elder child abuser, or worse. It is not a character flaw to be kind. Even if such traits bring out the worst in people who enjoy hurting others, Sure, it's easy to say that if the victim had only behaved differently, if they had stood up for themselves more, then maybe the abuse wouldn't have happened, or maybe it wouldn't have been as severe. But blaming any victim for being abused is just letting the abuser off the hook. Harry and Meghan have never been forced to abuse their families. They do it because it amuses them to do so, and because people just as unethical as themselves reward them for it, and make excuses for their behavior. One audience member shared, I had a bad childhood with some bitterness towards my sibling. Step-sibling was the perfect child, and my half-sister was my mother's do-over child that was worth dealing with her drug and alcohol problems. I'm estranged from my family as I was the scapegoat. Didn't realize how awful my childhood was until I talked about it in therapy, and her eyes widened and we spent time going over the ways they were wrong. People like Harry frustrate me. He needs a better therapist, one who tells him to do the work, not the drugs. I work on my bitterness and anger as well as other emotions to be a better person, and so that if I am lucky enough to have a child, I'm Harry's age, I won't repeat the cycle. I don't mention my abuse history on social media and my family knows about it, nor did I stay in the family and try to get benefits. For Harry to give the journalists dirt on his brother, demonstrate what this cancer can do. Harry and Meghan have a bunch of pieces of gossip to sell, and they're going to do it in drips and drabs for a while, even after the coronation. I truly believe that Meghan has this all planned out, to get attention for a while yet. These are two truly evil people. I think the only thing the king can do is to fight fire with fire, by releasing some information about the two of them that can ruin their credibility. I would not like to see the royal family mired in the Harkles pigsty. The more Harry and Meghan drip and drab, the worse they're going to look. People are already tired of them, thanks to Spare and the couple's interviews and Netflix series, especially after they've backtracked on the baby's color claim. They are looking more and more like two desperate grifters who would sell their own mother gladly. Both Harry and Meghan are traitors, not only to royal family, but to the voice of reason, common sense, and the public right and will to respond. They consistently put all voices, which don't agree with them, into a basket of you've all been media with palace's help indoctrinated or are part of some such team. Unnecessary for the royal family to engage in the mudslinging, that's exactly what they get. They have to go harder on the gray rock strategy, though. No invites, no birthday wishes, no nothing. Remove them from the royal family website. Door shut, sealed, barred. Nothing is left. Pretend they both don't exist for the rest of their sorry existence. Let's see what we can do. King Charles can't remove anything from Harry. Not his title, not his style, not his place in the line of succession, not his children's titles. Only Parliament can do those things. King Charles has removed Harry from the Crown property. He has cut ties with him financially. He hasn't mentioned Harry in public. We only have Harry and the reporter's word for the heart-to-heart. The palace said Harry's office spoke to the palace. We know Harry has no place in the coronation procession, no spot on the balcony, and because Harry has been so concerned over seating, I'm presuming he's with the non-working royals, 
he has no part in the coronation. King Charles could have made a public statement saying Harry and Meghan would not be invited to the coronation. And what good would that do? It would make things worse because Meghan would call out the squad and the royal family would be hit even harder. Best to get beyond the coronation and break ties. There are no big occasion for the Who's after May 6th. They won't even have a home in the UK. But I do agree that Harry should be cut off from May 7th onwards. Here, an expert expressed his opinion. Charles has some power. Legislation can be changed. Precedents can be set. Laws are not immutable. If he made such requests for such legislative changes, would Parliament really ignore him? He could have rolled back the 1917 patent, denying Harry and Meghan titles for their children. Charles and the royal family know they can also use legal proceedings against Harry and Meghan, if they so choose. I also don't really buy into that but if the royal family do this, then the sugars will call them racist argument, as the sugars will do whatever the royal family does. And they have been doing. Repeatedly, no matter what the royal family does, the Grey Rock strategy has not stemmed from the attacks coming from Montecito. It has made no difference. The only way this madness will stop is if the royal family cut ties with Harry and Meghan. Nobody will be interested in them without their royal connections, she will go back to being a D-list actress, and he will be an unemployed ex-soldier. They will no longer be able to fund their lifestyle of private jets, paid for PR pieces, and Twitter attack bots. The ironic part of all of this is that Harry has taken the newspapers to court for breaching his privacy. He is doing exactly the same thing to the royal family. So why did the royal family force the newspapers to pay a settlement for breaching their privacy when Harry is being allowed to breach their privacy with impunity. What Harry's doing is even worse, as he's doing it to his own family. However, for Harry and Meghan to reach this level of constant and relentless royal harassment, the public is partly to blame. Like it or not, in the narcissism, greed, and 24-7 computer age, media attention is gold. As dumb as they are, the Harkles know that. By human nature, we are all gossips, why else would so many who have never even met royals or rich celebrities bother following or obsessing about their silly comics and antics besides their buying products and spinning? People here complain, saying they want it to stop, but do they really? This and many wild over-the-top comments indicate the contrary. The irony of public complicity in enabling their grift by giving them the constant attention they crave and money is sadly hilarious. The truth is people love gossip and those gossiping and the media peddling it are making huge profits from that. Always have, always will. If we really want them to shut up or go away, we first have to ignore them. It's the only remedy. What do you think of the danger Harry and Meghan are posing to the royal family and the public? Let us know your thoughts below in the comment section. We hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to leave a like share and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this newsletter. See you in the next videos. Goodbye.